it is critical you know the, the withdrawal date is you know it's it's, it's a, a legal number that, that you know everybody's going to come back to that specific number that's on it on the product it's also important with regards to uh, like lambs coming near slaughter, you know, with, with the, these up to 65 days withdrawal, if you're thinking you're going to sell them with, within that sort of period, it's just that that's also important just to, to think, do I actually need to dose this animal at all, you know? Hello, I'm Kieran Lynch and welcome to Obicast, the Chaga Sheep Podcast. Each episode will bring you less insights, advice and technical updates for the sheep industry. In this week's episode, we're joined by Terry McIlvany, veterinary inspector with the Department of Microsoft Food and the Marine. Discuss some issues they've encountered with fluconcide residues in lamb carcasses. We discuss the problems encountered and the follow up investigations, where Terry explains some of the causes and issues they've encountered at farm level. We discuss the key areas to focus on when using antibiotics or antibiotics to avoid these type of problems occurring. We hear first from Terry. I work in the, the National Residue um, Control Plan area in, the, in Medicines Division in DAF, um, and we, we're, we basically we do 70,000 samples. Um, of different different substances in in the year, and last year, often we we on average we'd maybe get twenty five positives within within a year, and last year we had ten um, placental positives. So it was a, a major issue. It was a major blip within twenty twenty three. Um, so it, it's a specific worry with regards. It affects then the export trade as well, um, and. Whenever we get a, a positive there, we then do an investigation on farm. So the, uh, the follow-up of, of those 10 investigations, the, the three things that we were seeing, we were seeing overdosing issues. We were seeing farmers not, not uh, with, with hearing to the withdrawal. And we were also seeing communication issues, basically, with, with passing on uh, that information to, to, other, um, to other farmers in Marts and, and in the main one. So you, you touched on a couple of issues there. Look, I suppose let's just give the full context around this. There is a food safety issue at the heart of all this when you're finding residues. So that has to be put in the context. Um, absolutely. And like, that, that has to be the starting point for any of this. Yeah, no, absolutely. It, it is It is a major food, you know, um, our export market basically relies on our, our goodwill and, and our, our um you know the, our past history in in trade and 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 having those green pastures and and those clean lambs and the last thing we want to do is is having residue showing up with with um, positives for any substance, um, and it, it you know that's that's basically what what our job is is surrounding with in the residue control plan is is identifying those issues um, and you know making sure then they're, they're they're removed from from the food chain as as necessary as well you know. So when they show up, given the traceability we have, there is an on-farm investigation triggered and you've highlighted a couple of issues we can tease out a bit more. Yeah. You mentioned something else there, like the residues have been detected at slaughter plant level, so they are, or samples afterwards. Yeah. It may not always be the person that actually finished those animals when they went into the food chain. You touched on some there where yeah. maybe it's dealers, it's finishers that are taking on colios or whatever it was, Absolutely. have them for a couple of weeks, sell them on. There is an onus there on those selling live to actually inform them when these animals have been treated. Absolutely, yeah. No, it's critical, and it is something that keeps re- raising its head with with their investigations. Is is animals that have been sold on in the mart or, or even sold on privately? Um, there's a legal obligation on the seller to to put that information um, and announce that information to the actual buyer and put that into into the food chain document. You know, um, so that is critical. Look, we'll go back to the basics on this. And you touched on communication, and I think this is important. Look, it was a particularly challenging year for fluke, and flucocytes tend to have longer withdrawal dates, but all antibiotics we use, antibiotics we use, have withdrawal periods on them, or nearly all. If I go back to the very basics of this and look at some of the key things that could be done slightly better, what would you say if we put them in an order? What are they? Yeah, so the big, I mean, it's generally the big five that I I think of. So the first one is reading your instructions specifically, okay? So each product is different, even, you know, we're talking about clasantal residues here in lambs, but each clasantal product, there's a variation between 28 days up to 65 days, which is a long variation between products there. Um, And you have to know specifically what product you're dealing with. Um, 
the other one with with specifically the product is to shake the product. So basically, there's any of the ones that say suspension or or recommend shaking. It's very important that you shake that bottle because with the suspensions, the the substance will settle to the bottom, which will leave a higher concentration in your last few doses that's coming out of that bottle. So it's very important to to shake that well um, before you use that. The other one then is weighing the animals. So we want you to, to specifically weigh, I'm not saying weigh every animal, but know specifically what the weight of, of the batch of, of lambs that you're treating, maybe divide them into to three um, and weigh specifically or dose specifically to, to their actual weight. I know that there's a, there's a thought there, um, you know, with regards resistance issues, but with regards um, parasitic resistance and that sort of thing, uh, parasiticide resistance. Um there's to slightly overdose, but that's you, you, you just weigh appropriate with, to your product, basically. And that, that's very important because you can run into more issues like we're talking here with residues if you do slightly o- overcompensate. And you mentioned something there, there are, there are different products on the market. So the concentration could certainly be different between them. Some are more geared for cattle, lower dose rates, maybe giving the sheep at higher rates that they didn't need. It's very, very easy to make a mistake on that. You know, the cattle and the sheep product can, can, you know, can be very, very similar. The names can be very, very similar, just a slight change in, in the concentration. So it's very important just to get that specific information leaflet that's with your product and have a good read of that before you start dosing it all. Absolutely. You touched on one other thing. Yeah, look, we've talked about passing on that information when we're selling live, but keeping that basic record, Terry, identifying those animals, like putting a mark on them, keeping that date wrote down and adhering to that withdrawal date is critical. Yes, absolutely. No, like it is critical. You know, the, the withdrawal date is, you know, it's 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 a, a legal number that that you know everybody's going to come back to that specific number that's on it, on the product. Um, it's also important with regards to uh, like lambs coming near slaughter. You know, with with the, these up to sixty five days withdrawal, it's important not to do. You know, if if a lamb is coming up, if you're thinking you're going to sell them with within that sort of period, it's just that that's also important just to to think: Do I actually need to dose? this animal at all you know um the other thing with regards records and we we touched on it with regards um passing on the information to to your buyers um but it's it's also important when we do our investigation that your records are are robust they're sound then that that the dates are are correct that the the individual animal can be kind of identified to specifically they're the sort of questions that 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 we'll be asking on on the on-farm inspection um and also um the HPRA, we, we, we're working alongside the HPRA with the HPRA. They've put a, a warning on their website with regards specifically clasantal issues and just because we're seeing these um, residue positives. But also to, to just highlight the fact that, that there is a section in there for adverse drug reactions, just any with any product, with any pharmaceutical product, that th- there's a space there for if you have an issue or there's there's an issue with a residue or an issue with, with even just a reaction to a product, that, that that's the place to go to. Um, that can be raised by your vet, but it can also be raised just by, by the farmer themselves and, or, or whoever, you know, the relevant person. I'm just thinking when you mentioned the HPRA website, and it's a very useful database. Look, the withdrawal periods are on the products, but frequently, given the Irish claim we have, the leaflets, the labels on them might sometimes get tarnished or worn and the withdrawal date might be off them. For those wanting to go back and check if they've it accurately, that HPRA website or the veterinary section of it, is, it's a great database for all products, really. Yeah. It is. It is. There's a great da- data there. Like the SPCs is, is what, what we, we talk about, but that, that's the specific um, product information that, that's available on all those products, all licensed products there. And it's just a matter of searching that up on, on the, the HPRA website. And yeah, it's all available. The, the most updated and one should be there. Yeah. Look, hopefully it's something we don't see an issue with again. But I suppose to put it in context, um, we touched on this already. Anytime we use any product, whether there's withdrawals, it's something to be very careful of. Like, with the bigger picture to take in the account here. Absolutely. Absolutely. No withdrawals are critical. It's not just Clasantal. I mean, next year it could be something else we could be focusing on. You know, uh, the, the big thing with the Clasantal is just because of, of the the lambs and, and, and the, the large kind of difference in, in the withdrawals. I think that they're the two, two kind of topics that we're seeing here but we do see other other substances we see antibiotics we see other other anthelmintics general you know flucosides is, is always um, something we're looking out for so yeah the same the same kind of science applies to all of these products absolutely 
there you look really appreciate you coming on i think that's a useful reminder to us just to be careful of how we're approaching these things absolutely yeah yeah no it, it certainly is it's a reminder for everyone yeah thanks care we leave it there for this week's episode it's a very important issue terry's highlight hopefully it's probably don't see recording this season i have included a link in the show notes to the hpra veterinary website if you type in any product we're using whether it be antibiotic or antibiotic you'll be able to pull up the data sheet for each time and get the correct information on it very useful website that's it for me for updates on the sheep program keep an eye on our twitter page at chocolate sheep i'm kieran lynch thanks for joining us don't forget to subscribe and follow us for more episodes